I think uh, we've heard some really interesting stories this morning, entrepreneurship, creativity, uh, how to feed a rat, how to, I think, back a winner. Bill, I need to talk to you about that. Um, we're, we're the top feed, we'll get a winner out of that. And spirits, both gin and I think spirits around the table of entrepreneurship and uh, the future. So it's been a fantastic morning for me. Now you've got to put up with me uh, as Small Business Commissioner. I'm the man from the government and I'm here to help you. <laughs> you laugh. Okay. But seriously, um, we've, we've discussed a lot about collaboration this morning. But I think sometimes collaboration goes bad in business. Uh, the partnerships and sometimes you get into a dispute. That's where we can help you. As Small Business Commissioner, my office is set up to help you as small business operators when you fall into a dispute with another business, local government or indeed state government. Sitting underneath the Small Business Commissioner Act are a series of codes which trigger powers under the Fair Trading Act and I won't bore you uh, rigid in terms of, of those. There are details in your packs today. Um, but specifically in the farming area, franchising, motor vehicle and news agency, I have a much greater power of inquiry and dispute resolution process. So if you're in those industries, farming for example, if you've got an issue with a bank, we can get involved in that and indeed I can command the bank to the table. We don't use those powers that often. I've had to trigger them recently in relation to a motor vehicle dispute and a multinational car manufacturer who, as I say, probably wasn't playing nicely. Uh, they're now playing very nicely once I've triggered the powers and they're coming to the table and talking to us. The disputes we deal with, um, it can range, the smallest one we've dealt with in the past year, a bit over $100. But to a micro business, that's important. The largest, $1.3 million. And that company was facing bankruptcy and we managed to negotiate an outcome with the, with the two parties through a formal mediation process. The approach to dispute resolution, pretty straightforward. It, it's about talking. It's about communicating with people. Con contacting our office with the initial dispute, we will talk to the other side, we will hear both stories and start the process of trying to navigate a solution. We can do that through informal mediation or indeed I can bring in a formal mediator from outside to try and navigate solutions. Basically about two thirds of our cases we do resolve but interestingly, the ones that we don't, often for very good reason. Sometimes the expectations of the small business who come to us are very high. Sometimes the small business comes to us not in good faith. So we require both sides to act in good faith when they uh, come to a dispute resolution process with our office. I'm also responsible for the Retail and Commercial Leases Act. So if you're in a small business and you're renting premises, you should have a lease generally which will fall under the Retail and Commercial Leases Act. That act has been reviewed and the review is out there so if you are interested in that area, perhaps you're a landlord uh, or a tenant, have a look at the review because uh, the government will be very keen to hear your feedback on the proposed changes. <laughs> if you're doing work for the government, the government is required to pay you within 30 days unless it's in dispute. If they're not paying, let me know. <laughs> because I will have a chat to a few people and invariably um, we hope we normally get to a resolution. Um, but I do have powers of arbitration depending on the type of dispute where I can impose a penalty on the government. Now I haven't had to do that because we've generally been able to fast track uh, the process. Keeping in mind the government is processing 200 to 300,000 invoices every month. Sometimes things go do, do go wrong and we can help you through that process. If you're in the building industry, I'm responsible for the uh, Security Payment Act. That act has been reviewed and there will be a consultation paper released very shortly uh, which will outline some of the changes which are designed to get subcontractors paid. I'd have to say uh, this industry is unique in terms of people doing good work and then not getting paid. Um, we're trying to find ways in which we can assist. Sometimes you do need regulation and red tape for the greater good of business and the Security Payment Act is one of those and we've got a few more changes and ideas in terms of that. I've got some brief res uh, responsibilities under the uh, Work Health and Safety Act in terms of the codes um, which I won't uh, spend a lot of time on but there is a bit of information in your packs. 
I've got a role in informing, uh, going out, talking to business, um, be it to small groups, be it to large groups like this. Uh, I work with industry associations, uh, that's Nigel McBride from Business SA with Lynette Martin, who's your local uh, Chamber of Commerce president here in Mount Gambia. We were down here about six, well, about eight weeks ago uh, for a function out at the barn and a great uh, networking event with local businesses. We also run a series of events uh, designed to assist small business uh, in informing them on what's happening in various areas, be it Return to Work SA, Safe Work, uh, National Broadband Network, when that's coming, that provides enormous opportunities for small business in terms of transforming your back-end operation with high-speed broadband. Being able to access accounting systems like Xero um, and management systems, HR systems, can save you an enormous amount of time. Uh, that other fellow there in the picture is Ian Nightingale, the industry participation advocate. We work very closely with Ian to ensure that you as small business get access uh, to government contracts locally rather than them going into state. And the recent figures have gone from 50% of local businesses getting government work, and, uh, work services and goods supplied through to 91% sitting at now. So Ian has done a fantastic job in that and if you've got difficulties getting access to government contracts, contact the industry participation advocate. Okay, part of my role in forming is talking about some of the services that are available to you and the primary industries and regions of South Australia, or better known as PERSA, is one of the key economic development agencies. Now we've got PERSA representatives here today, we've got Scott Ashby is over there on my right, Mehdi Dahoudi, I think, is up the back. Uh, Stuart West, where he is, Stuart? He's here somewhere. And uh, Benji Polo, the director of Regions SA. PERSA, one of the key priorities is leading the, the delivery of the government's program for premium food and wine. Produced in a clean environment, and it's great just talking on my table in terms of organic lamb that's been grown up there in the Mallee and uh, the opportunities that presents for this state. And then exporting to the world. Huge opportunities there for the state and indeed you as small businesses. PERSA does that through partnerships, growth, innovation and supporting business efficiencies through expansion. Underpinning that, um, Minister Brock talked about the Regional Development Fund this morning. So if you've got a great idea for expansion, please talk to one of the PERSA um, staff here. If you've got issues in relation to where government sits, have a chat to me. The Department of State Development um, is supporting small business in a large range of areas. And there's a series of programs that the department is supporting, the Business Transformation Voucher Program. That's about improving profitability through diversification, process improvement and innovation. There's an Innovation Voucher Program to fund research and development of organisations to deliver innovative technical projects for companies. There's also the Unlocking Capital for Jobs, which is a government guarantee program which helps you get your finance across the line with the bank. DSD got a whole range more programs. They are in your bag. Um, one of the important ones is Young Entrepreneurs and they partner with Business SA to deliver the Say Yes program, uh, which is for young entrepreneurs. And that's a very successful program in mentoring you to the next stage of your business development. Investment attraction, the department's doing a lot of work in that area. And at the moment, uh, form the new investment attraction agency has been formed in the department, which will have a $15 million fund to attract foreign investment directly into South Australia and create jobs. Now we've got Marcus Culler, the export advisor here from Trade Start with DSD. Where are you, Marcus? Up the back. Um, so please have a chat to Marcus and Alex Reid, who's the Deputy Chief Executive of the Department, is also here. If you're thinking about exporting, think about the trade missions. Uh, really important, Minister Hamilton Smith, the Trade and Investment Minister, is currently in Southeast Asia. Um, there is now a program of missions which provides you with certainty in terms of your future plans on growing your export needs. Supporting small business is important with the department and there's a series of workshops. The department um, provides those 
generally for a low cost and particularly in regional areas. So there's a strong focus. So go to the department's uh, website and you will see uh, those uh, programs which cover business profitability. Uh, we're doing one on work health and safety. Um, there's also ones on cash flow, digital marketing and a whole range of other areas to port, support you as small business. Export support, trade start programs um, and the export assistance program. Uh, Marcus again will provide you with details on those. Skills and employment, we've talked about the need for skills particularly in country areas and the department has regional leaders groups set up in 17 areas across the state providing direct input back into the department on what is needed in terms of skills development. There are a series of programs in terms of training, sitting under work ready and uh, other programs there, again, to support you as business. We've got David Hill, who's the Regional Manager Skills and Employment uh, here today. And importantly, um, I should also recognise the work the universities are doing. The three universities are doing some fantastic work in terms of entrepreneurship, innovation and collaboration. And that's in conjunction with uh, the government and uh, great work there. So please uh, today pick, the, pick up that because you might find there's a big opportunity there for you. What else do I do? Sometimes I get involved in the wider picture and uh, Wyala has been one that's dominated my time for the last five weeks and for very good reason. Um, seeing the businesses in that town suddenly hit with cash flow issues uh, when you lose three months' income, we've talked about the dairy farmers this morning, I heard about that, um, you suddenly see businesses lose three months' income through the administration and they need a hand. Now, I have to congratulate the State Government and Minister Brock and the Treasurer uh, for putting their hands in their pockets and putting $10 million on the table to assist those small businesses and survive. Um, it's been hard work, uh, we've still got a long way to go, but we will get there. Um, that person on the left, Mark Mentha, extremely important to the future of Wyala. I'd have to say my dealings with Corda Mentha have been first class. Uh, a lot is resting on that man and indeed the state and federal governments. Hopefully we will navigate a path for the, the greater good um, and uh, that will evolve over the coming months. We are but a phone call away, an email away. Like us on Facebook. My marketing people tell me you must do that. Don't unlike me, I'll get really hurt. Um, <laughs> our team is there ready to help you with your inquiries and uh, I'll be around during the day, so if you've got some specific issues you'd like to talk about, uh, happy to do that. Thank you very much for your time.